All right. So, just so we understand the transition into Ephesians chapter 2, chapter 1 ended with Paul saying that Christ was raised from the dead to be the head of the church. And he said, the church has the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit. So now he's going to tell us how that happened, right? That's what these verses are about in the first part of chapter 2. How did it happen that we became a part of the church and that we have the power of the Holy Spirit? Paul is going to tell us that we were spiritually dead, but we've been raised with that same power. So let's read this. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. It says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, Paul seems to love run-on sentences in this letter, okay? Remember, we said way back here in chapter 1 that verses uh, 3 through 14, that's one long sentence, all right? Well, here in chapter 2, verses 1 through 7 is another run-on sentence, long sentence. And the first half of the sentence looks back at what we were before Christ. The second half of the run-on sentence looks at what we are or who we are in Christ, Okay, so this is kind of a contrast, the before and after picture. And first Paul says, he says that we were dead. What does the Bible word dead mean? Okay, it means separation, doesn't it? Okay, when the Bible speaks of death, it's talking about a separation of one kind or another. And biblically speaking, there are three kinds of death. There's physical death. That happens when our soul separates from our body. There is spiritual death. That happens when our soul is separated from God because of our sin. And then there is eternal death. That means our soul is separated from God forever and ever because of our sin, because our sins haven't been forgiven. So he says here that, that we were dead. So that means we were separated from God. And he says that the reason we were separated from God was because we were living in transgressions and sins. The word transgressions means to slip. It means to fail. It means to deviate. Okay? Sins means to miss the mark. And so perhaps, perhaps what he's talking about here is intentional and unintentional sin, possibly. But either way, there's transgressions and there's sins, and both of them mean that we have fallen short of God's word. We have short, fallen short of God's will. And Paul says, this is where we lived, in which you used to live, when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work, and those who are disobedient. So this isn't saying that all we did before Christ was sin. This isn't saying that sinners are only horrible, terrible people. But this means that our entire life before Christ was being lived away from God. Away from God. Now, because our life was being lived away from or outside of the guidance and influence of God, Paul says that the thing that did influence us was the world. You followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. So Paul is saying that what influenced us before Christ was the world. I need somebody to look up 1 John. 
1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, and read that for us, okay? According to those verses, what is the influence of the world? New International Version says, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Maybe your version says something else. Okay? So the influence of the world, the thing that the world puts on the pedestal, is sex, money, and power. Now you can, you know, there's different nuances of that if you want. Um, so money would include materialism, so forth. Uh, power would be respect, uh, influence, position, those types of things. So that's what the world, that's what the world elevates. That's what the world values. And this is what the Bible means when it talks about worldliness. It means running after the priorities of the world instead of the priorities of God. And Paul says here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, that Satan, the ruler of the kingdom of the air, is at work in those who are disobedient. That means that Satan is the one who is actively at work trying to keep people focused on the wrong thing. Okay? So before Christ, Satan was actively at work in us trying to get us to focus on, in different nuances or different terminology, whatever you want, but sex, money, and power. And so he wants us to pursue the things of the world instead of drawing near to God. And what we need to know and remember about Satan is that he is currently being allowed to have this influence. He has this freedom to influence, but there is coming a day when God will say, no more. And Satan will be removed. John 12, 31 says, the prince of this world will be driven out. And Paul says here in Ephesians that by Satan influencing through the world, the priorities and the pursuits of unbelievers, that's how Satan is at work in those who don't believe. It's not necessarily demon possession. Okay? It's not saying that all believers are demon possessed, but it is saying that all unbelievers are being acted upon and influenced by Satan through the world. Through the world. 